Shots. What's up, combies? I'm Hannah. I'm Olivia. And it's time to kombucha. Okay, so, um, you been to any Zoom parties lately? <laughs> um, actually, I have. I went to a Zoom party for my college improv troupe. Team. Oh, no way. Yeah, we hadn't talked to each other all in quite some time, so um, we all met up in a Zoom meeting room. There was like nine or ten of us, and yeah, it was really fun catching up with everyone, talking about The Bachelor, talking about what everyone's up to. I bet that was fun with an improv crowd. Oh, I actually couldn't stop laughing. It's crazy that this has become such a phenomenon, right? Zoom parties. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah. It's really the best way to hang out with people and still feel socially responsible. I think it's good too, because you can connect with people far, far away. You know, we were all in different states and could catch up. Socially responsible. What does that mean? Well, you know, not spreading germs. <laughs> oh, got it. Got it. Right. Yeah. Not going out. That sort of thing. Being at home. I got you. Yes. So, um, combies, if you're wondering, today we are going to be talking about how to create a night out when you're stuck in. Yes, we did this, gosh, quite a while ago now, but for New Year's Eve 2021, we hosted a Zoom party, had a lot of people show up, went live on Instagram, did the whole dang thing. And it was so fun. It was way more fun than I even anticipated. And it doesn't have to be anything big either. We're going to talk about a few different ways that you can host your night in. Um, but it could just be you and your household. Could be more. So should we get into it? Yeah, let's do it. I've kind of broken down my ideal Zoom party into four categories that you can kind of personalize and make your own. So the first one is creating your guest list. So for the first question to ask is, is it a night out for you and your household or are you trying to really socialize? Oh, okay. <laughs> Tell me more. Well, I think that a good example is one night we had like a make your own brewery kind of night at oh, your place. Yeah. What did we do? We made burgers. We picked up drinks. Yeah, we kind of made it feel like a little brewery at home situation. So that was more of like a household night in versus are we going to invite everyone on Instagram for our New Year's <laughs> party? <laughs> Fair. Okay, yes, I see the difference. So, you know, Zoom or video call of your choice with friends or open invite. And then something I thought was kind of cute just to razzle dazzle up the evening mm -hmm. was potentially making evites for everyone. I thought it would be cute to go on something like Canva or just in your email and kind of make it feel like it was more of an event and something special, maybe include a theme, a menu, anything like that. Ooh, wow. Menu. Yeah. Getting fancy. I like it. So menu, that leads us into number two, planning your menu, your food and your drinks. I'm, I'm all for that. I'm all for the food and drinks. So I think the first question I would ask myself is, do I feel like cooking or do I feel like ordering in? And for me, it's always going to be option number two. <laughs> Delivery, please. You are definitely a delivery girl. And that makes it fun, too, because you can try restaurants that are your favorite and, you know, have that be special. Or you can branch out and try something new. One thing I thought would be cute was on your little evite, you could include what you were planning to make for dinner. So if you were doing a brewery night with a bunch of friends, you could say, I'm making burgers and fries. Or if you were planning to order in, you could say, I'm ordering Thai food from this restaurant. Feel free to join me. So it's kind of like you could invite them to eat the same thing as you, which I think is just another element making everyone kind of feel together. That's cute. And then I think 
Valid question. Mocktails or cocktails? What kind of beverage do you want? Right. All are welcome. All can be themed. Yes. Uh, we, we stand for a theme up in here. We love a theme. So I think it's just fun thinking about your food. Another, another fun food thing we did was tapas. Mm-hmm. Just had like a bunch of appetizers, laid them all out selected from them as the night went on. Yeah, here's a great one, combis. For people who are like me and prefer delivery, another option, just buy a gang of tapa items. So nuts, cheeses, tons of frozen things, you know, jalapeno poppers, wings, and then go ahead and just oven it up. It is (gasps) so... It is so low maintenance, but it's so fun. And then you suddenly kind of have like a whole, whole vibe, a whole setup. And it was actually really low effort. It's true. It's like a warm charcuterie board. You just have all these beautiful little apps to eat from. Why not throw a few kombuchas in there? Hey, there you go. Okay, this takes us to number three, which would be wardrobe. Very important. So, is there a dress code? (laughs) And the answer for us is always a yes. 100% yes. Even when we're not trying to, we usually end up wearing clothes from the same color palette. So, for New Year's, it felt like a really good excuse to dress up for once. Mm, Man, like one of the few times of 2020. Right? Where I was like, I want, I actively want to put on a dress and put my hair up. Yes. No sweat sets were allowed. No. It was uh, black tie formal. (laughs) (laughs) The fun thing was a lot of people did wear something that was a little more dressed up. Like they'd actually have worn to dinner and drinks or the club. Definitely. Yeah. And even we had a few people pop in with uh, like glow stick glasses and glow sticks. So that in itself is just like a fun accessory. But, you know, if you are planning more of like a game night or just eating apps with friends totally dress how you feel confident how you feel comfortable always casual more casual put on that little tie-dye sweatsuit show a little tiktok dance (laughs) i love a tie-dye sweatset my fave one of my favorite theme colors btw would be metallic (laughs) okay (laughs) wow Say it like it's just a regular rainbow color. Anything that glitters, anything that shines, you're going to look amazing, everyone. And then the last like major component, number four for me in creating a night out in would just be vibes. Mm, And you know that is up my alley. This is 100% where I let you take over. I love a vibe. Okay, so you've got to have a good playlist. If you're planning on doing some kind of, I don't know, dancing or, or more than just like chatting, catching up, playing a game. If you're doing anything else like we'd have done for some of our Zoom parties, you've got to have a playlist with some bops. You've got to be ready, yeah, for some random dance parties. You've got to be ready to start those and make everybody else feel super comfortable. The the crazy, most funny thing to me about New Year's Eve was just the amount of things people jumped in and started doing once we showed them that, like, it was totally cool and we were just going to, like, TikTok dance the night away. I mean, we had people come in and start juggling. We had people come in and wave their pets around like it just turned into its own thing and that we love that type of vibe so you've got to set the stage for your guests like what's it gonna be you've got to set the music you know make a spotify playlist uh you're actually the one who set us up so that it would play out over zoom yeah and it's super easy to do you can just google it quick or you can dm me on instagram i'll give you directions but we set up the audio so that it sounded like good quality and it wasn't glitchy when people were talking on everyone's devices that were a part of the Zoom 
Yeah, that made a big difference. Actually, we had a lot of people comment on that because they could hear the sound really well. So it wasn't like it was just playing on ours and then like echoing back to them or anything. Anyways, it set the vibe. That is for sure. Don't do what we did, which is like pull up a bunch of ad YouTube videos for the first 15 minutes until you get an ad blocker set up and a bunch of tabs open. Maybe go ahead and, and, and pre-plan if you have the time and capacity. 100%. <laughs> um, from there, though, it's all about the lights. I stand for a light vibe. I got a whole Instagram highlight dedicated to the light vibes. Okay, I've got LED light bulbs and every light in this home. They're all on remotes. <laughs> it's a little spaceship whenever I want on demand. And so you got to set that up, like make it moody, get psychedelic, throw in one of my little starry projectors that I love to bring to everything imaginable with any excuse. So, you know, lights, music, decorations, Tone. decor. Oh, decorations. Good one. Yeah. Decor. Um, that's always, always big here. Uh, we always throw fun parties, uh, especially New Year's Eve. That's big for us. So whatever that might look like for you in this scenario, we did balloons, we did streamers, we've hung stuff from the ceiling, we've done confetti bombs, we, you know, whatever. Yeah, that I'm still finding confetti and that was, that was 2020, kids. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, I recommend, you know, getting an Amazon party pack. You can pick out some fun colors, make it feel like it's a real party because it, you'll be surprised how much that mentally creates the space for you to just like go all out. It's so true. It's so true. And the bigger space you have for a dance floor, I would say the better. Clear it out. Be close to the food, the drinks and the dancing. So that all sounds amazing to me. I mean, I, I love it. I think we've come up with some <clears throat> some fun things for people to incorporate into their staying in scenarios, you know, spicing up your Zoom parties. And if you're keeping it more casual and you're just having it with your household or you just kind of want um, to keep it small, keep it maybe it's even just you and you're taking yourself out on the date you can incorporate any of these things into your date still and and feel wonderful and feel fun and maybe throw on a cooking show at the end of the night to wind down <laughs> oh here she goes combies all right well share your zoom party tips with us maybe we'll even throw a zoom party here sometime again soon just to really really go hard on this episode for you commies. If you want to see us do that, if you want to go live with us, if you want to join that Zoom party, then hit us on Instagram, at Blonde on the Run, at Olivia, and share your tips with us. All right, we're back for another sweet and spicy rapid fire round where we ask each other a sweet or spicy question that we've made up without telling the other one or you have submitted on the gram or our website. You want to kick us off today? Okay, I will ask. Sweet or spicy? Um, let's go sweet. If you could bring one mythical creature to life, what would it be? This is surprisingly easy for me. What? So I work with this really fun event in the blockchain tech space every year. It's called ETH Denver. It happens in February. It is usually like 5,000 people from all over the world coming together in Denver, talking about Web3 technology, blockchains, Bitcoin, all that amazing stuff. Like when I joked on an earlier episode that, you know, vegan CrossFit and Bitcoin are things people never stop talking about. You're one, I'm one. I'm not saying which, but I think people probably know now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, they, we have created this crazy fun creature called the Buffacorn. It is part 
Colorado buffalo, part unicorn, combined into a buffacorn. And it has a rallying cry of Biddle. It yells Biddle, which is its own crypto meme. I know I'm getting nerdy here, folks, but stay with me. It's really cute. And he's super fun. He like is always flying around on rainbows and he loves to collaborate with other. Like there's a whole backstory I realize I'm like <laughs> I'm seeing already that. going into. You know how he travels. He travels in a, in a herd always. He loves to collaborate. He is the spirit of ETH Denver, and I would bring that little mythical magic to life. I love that. That was a better answer than I could have ever anticipated. <laughs> Thank you. So I'm on to you now. Okay, let's go. Sweet or spicy? Um, maybe spicy, because I've been eating a lot of hot sauce today. Mm, what kind of hot sauce? Trader Joe's Sriracha. Okay, nice. If you, oh boy, she's going to have a clever one for this. I already know. If you were to title your memoir right now, what would it be and why? Oh, okay. The title of my memoir would be, um, 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 <laughs> it's Supernova. Whoa. That's when a star explodes, right? Yes, I believe so. Um, so it would be Supernova because I'm going to be a star. And then when I died, I would release the book. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. So it would be my star exploding. I was not expecting that to be the reasoning, but, you know, here we are. Okay, cool. Well, combis tell us your own mythical creatures come to life and memoir titles on the gram or in the YouTube comments. We would love to hear them. All right. What are we reviewing today? Today we are reviewing... A Rowdy Mermaid Kombucha, which that's such a cute name. That is cute. I like that. This is Resilience Living Ginger with ginger, pepperberry, chaga, and Himalayan salt. And so is the Resilience the name or is all of that the name or? I would say at first glance, I'm unclear. Okay. It says Resilience and then Living Ginger. Got it. To me, Resilience feels like a theme and then living ginger is the name of it but it could be wrong so a little bit about rowdy mermaid it yes. started back in 2012 okay so newer brand newer brand when founder jamba dunn began brewing kombucha in his own garage he had a hunch that kombucha didn't have to be so kombucha-y. He felt it could be less sugary, less vinegary, less acidic, and safer. And his three-year-old daughter challenged him to craft something superior to the products existing on the shelves. This is a Colorado brand, we said? I thought so, but does it say on the bottle where it's, where it's bottled and brewed? Colorado crafted. Nordic inspired. So obviously our kombucha has to taste good, but for us it also has to do good. Being a living probiotic beverage with a 2000 year tradition is not enough. So we brew living ginger with chaga mushroom for adrenal, adrenal. system support. Adrenal. Mm -hmm. Adrenal system support. <laughs> Tasmanian pepperberries intertwine with spicy ginger to give you an... They have a lot of words on here. <laughs> Okay. Uh, helps resist stressors with a flavor that's anything but medicinal. Yeah, so adrenals is, you know, your hormones live in your adrenal glands, and that helps regulate your, your metabolism, your immune system, blood pressure, your response to stress. So maybe this is kind of a calming resilience. I'm kind of getting that vibe from what you're reading. I actually ran into Rowdy Mermaid for the first time going to different promotional events around Denver a couple of years ago, since they're a Colorado brand. So I have to say, as far as branding on the bottle, I do like that it's clean, it's white, it's green. There's not a whole lot to it, but it's simple enough that that simple clean look is attractive to me. Um, so I do like the can. Yeah, I think they have cute elements to it, but cohesively it's not 
something I would be drawn to. It kind of looks like a white claw to me. Whoa, it does. And so I might off the bat think it's that kind of drink unless it was grouped in at the grocery store with all of the other kombuchas, which, you know, tends to be. Right. Um, but I, I wouldn't be quite sure what it was. There, there are little things I like. I think they have their language down very well and mm-hmm. that everything feels like it's worded to the brand. And I also like that this, what's this called again? Barcode? Uh-huh. Is oh, shaped like a mermaid cool. tail. Details. I love a detail like that. There are little details I like, but it is very simple, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's just maybe not my favorite. Okay. Shall we open it? What is the sugar on this one? Oh, yeah. The sugar is nine grams. So low. And it markets that way. Low sugar, non-GMO, plant-based, gluten-free. That Serving size, one container. Container. Yep. Let's dive into it. It's got a nice little fizz when you pour. Nice bubbly. And then it's pretty settled. Yep, so not a ton of sediment in this. I've kind of noticed, I feel like maybe some sometimes cans have a little less sediment. I don't know if that's just a pattern or yeah, actually accurate. Sure. Uh, ginger heavy on the smell, for sure. Ginger mm-hmm. forward coming through for me. Like you said, definitely settles once you pour, so not a ton of bubbly happening. So if you're not into that, then this that's kind of nice. Taste test. Cheers. Combies. I definitely get the ginger. I don't get a whole lot else on this one. I understand what they mean by it not being kombucha-y because it's not. So that's marketed well. They know what they're doing. Um, I could see myself going for this one when I'm really looking for that ginger vibe, when I maybe want to pair it with something that ginger goes well with as far as like what I'm eating. Yeah, and ginger kind of evokes a thought of like health, low stress, yeah, helping your stomach feel better. Yeah. Those are all things I think of with ginger and this would feel like that kind of go-to drink for me. Absolutely. So honestly, a little more of like a health choice on this one, I would say, than necessarily like, oh, I'm really in the mood for like the certain flavor profile. Just kind of a clean aftertaste too. Nothing really yeah, lingers. Yeah. Um, okay. Scoby scale. Hmm. Taking all things into consideration, I think I'm going to give it a 2.5. I don't necessarily love the packaging, even though I think it has elements that are very cute and on point. And as far as flavor goes, I don't know that I'm ever just really wanting a ginger drink, except for those specific times that I'm looking to kind of get a health boost or something. So it's just not a flavor I would drink regularly. And I do personally kind of like the kombucha e aspect of kombucha. So it's it's not quite a three for me, but it doesn't feel like just a two. So I'm going to go 2.5. I'll go three on this one. I do love the detail in their branding. That always like gets me. I love a detail. I can see the white claw confusion. That sucks because I feel like White Claw came to popularity after this brand was already established, or at least I knew about them. Um, So that's unfortunate. I would have to agree. I do like that typical kombucha taste. I mean, kombucha, that's, that's what we do. I still do like, it's a clean bottle. It's a clean design. It's a clean taste. And so... clean, kids. That's kind of the theme that comes through for me and... I'll keep that at a three. Thanks for joining us on another episode, Combies. A special shout out to Gold Threads for music and audio production. They customize all of our music for this podcast, so you've got to check them out. This has been an On The Run Media podcast. Make sure you like, review, comment, and subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Let us know your favorite part of the episode in the comments. And of course, on Instagram, I'm at Blonde on the Run. And I'm at Olivia. We'll see you next time, combies. <laughs>